The sport of ski cross is an amped up version of alpine racing. In this sport, skiers go down four at a time, a hell-bent sprint for the finish line. First one to the bottom wins. Back in 2012, the heart and soul of the Canadian ski cross team was Nick Zoricic. Handsome and hardworking, he had a goal. He wanted to ski for Canada in the 2014 Olympics. Nick was born in Sarajevo in 1983. His parents, Bebe and Sylvia, practically raised him on skis. By the age of 15, Nick was ranked number one in the world in his age group for GS, or Giant Slalom. But after years competing in alpine skiing, Nick made a decision that would change his life. He switched to the high-speed, high-risk sport of ski cross. What was your reaction when he, he told you he wanted to take up the sport of ski cross? I, I still blame myself for agreeing because he was asking me for advice, whether he should go there, and I said yes, because he wanted, and I said yes. I still cannot forgive myself. Why not? Because he died. March 10th, 2012. The sun was shining in Grindelwald for the last race of the season. Nick was racing a fellow Canadian, as well as skiers from France and Germany. He was in third place as he approached the final jump. He would never make it to the finish line. A crash so spectacular, it's hard to pinpoint what killed him. But race organizers were quick to blame Nick's death on what they called pilot error. In other words, it was his own fault. To read what the people's reaction, the organizers involved with this race, they say it was a tragic accident. It was freak accident. A freak accident. Pilot's error. Hmm. Do you accept that? No. No, absolutely not. The Zoricic family wanted an investigation. They asked their lawyer, Tim Danson, to look into Nick's death. Stressing they didn't want a lawsuit, they just wanted to find the facts. Danson poured over that video of the final moments of Nick's life. If you had a normal finish line, he'd be alive. If, the, if it was groomed between the, 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 uh, the, the, the finish line post and the fence, he'd be alive. If you had proper fencing, he'd be alive. Every single one of these things was wrong. So this isn't just incompetence. This is extreme, extreme incompetence and negligence. Jonas Davouassou, the French skier who was beside Nick when he died, agrees that finish area was dangerous. And he says he complained about it before the race, to his coach and to race officials. So we talked about with uh, Joe, uh, we said it would be good to have bigger one and we asked him if, if he could uh, put some blue stripes in this area because it was also uh, dark and we couldn't see anything. Joe is Joe Fitzgerald. He's a Canadian and the race director for FIS, the governing body of ski cross. He approved the design of that course. We spoke to him not long after Nick's death. I guess some people had voice concerns about the finish. For you, how did you perceive the finish? I didn't hear any concerns about the finish from anybody. Nobody? No. Oh. We were speaking with uh, one of the French skiers, and he had said that he had concerns about the finish, that the finish was a little tight, that the, some of the skiers were veering off towards the right, and that the, he had expressed those concerns to you. I don't actually recall that he expressed any of those concerns. Who, which skier was this? Uh, Jonas. Uh, I don't recall Devisu. that. No. Shortly after Nick's death, the Ski Federation did announce all course designers must now be certified and follow strict design guidelines, but stopped short of admitting faulty course design led to Nick's death. But when we left Nick's parents two years ago, they felt they were being stonewalled by officials with the Federation, who couldn't even muster an apology for the death of their only son. I wonder for you as a mother, what would an apology mean to you now? 
from this? It's basically telling the world, hey guys, something was wrong here. And we apologize, not just to us, to everybody. And let's, let's make it safer for these athletes who continue racing. Bebe and Silvia waited months for the Ski Federation to directly address Nick's death. Their lawyer gave the Federation a two-year deadline to improve skier safety or else. And this is part of the public record, and it's no secret, um, that if we weren't able to reach a resolution and if people continued to blame Nick Zoric for his own death, there was going to be a lawsuit, and then we would litigate this in the courtroom. With time running out on the deadline, there would be a dramatic breakthrough. It's rare for an organization with the power and prestige of the International Ski Federation to blink. But last March, two years to the day after Nick's death, it did just that. Pressured by the Zoricic family, the Federation admitted Nick was not responsible for his death. It wasn't pilot error, as officials had originally claimed. The Federation also drew up new safety guidelines. There will now be a wider area at the finish line, groomed snow along the safety nets, and there can no longer be any structures or piles of snow near the finish area. The Federation concludes the lessons from Nick's death have been learned. We caught up with Bebe and Sylvia Zoricic this week. I was blown away, you can, you can call it. It's uh, not only on the World Cup level, but it's on grassroots. Nick's parents were finally able to claim victory for all skiers. So for me now, teaching uh, new athletes and new upcomers and hopefully Olympians, uh, uh, it was a huge relief and a huge boost of my kind of confidence and I don't want to say happiness, but it's uh, something it's, it's gives me gives me energy to coach again in purpose. When we last spoke, you you had this anger in your heart, uh, especially when the words freak accident and pilot error. I mean, you almost spit those words out when they were presented to you. Have you been able to? put your anger aside or is there something still in there because at the end of the day you still lost your son you know that that will always stay in me and you you just cannot move away from that what what this enables is just to think about it from a different perspective you look at it from perspective of others and what you can do for others to avoid that happening to anybody else but how i deal with with the loss at what it means in my heart, it's just, it's going to stay there forever until, until I live. Danson says Nick's legacy is forever sealed in snow. I mean, when you ski around, you know, the world and you see the people, the kids, and other people with the NZ, the Nick Zorich, you know, sticker on their helmet or, or you know, on their clothing, um, it's really symbolic. I mean, I mean, it, it's, it's quite amazing when you see this, um, gel into something so exciting because it is it that it's symbolism of skier safety and so his legacy is a tremendous legacy i mean it really is remarkable what he's been able to do for the sport uh is uh in death is 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 more than a lot of people can do in life